Hi, in this video, we will see examples of angular momentum conservation. Angular momentum is related to torque in the same way momentum is related to force. That is, just as you need to apply force over a duration of time to change momentum, you need to apply a torque over a duration of time to change angular momentum. And just as force obeyed Newton's third law, when two objects within a system interact with each other, there is no net change in momentum because the impulse due to the action force is cancelled by impulse due to reaction force. Torque obeys Newton's third law. I can illustrate this best with this freely rotating platform. If I stand here and try to rotate myself, that's just like trying to move myself on a frictionless sheet of ice. You can't, because as the upper body is made to rotate clockwise, the lower body rotates counterclockwise because of the reaction torque. But here's an interesting twist. Just as I can move myself on frictionless ice, if I have some object to transfer momentum to, like a wall to push, or someone else to push, if I have some object to transfer angular momentum to, I can make myself rotate the other way. Here, I am holding a wheel spinning clockwise, as viewed from top. When I flip the wheel over, over this duration of time, on net, I am applying a counterclockwise torque on the wheel, which ends up spinning counterclockwise. And as I apply counterclockwise torque, the wheel applies a clockwise counter torque on me, which causes me to spin clockwise. If you consider the system of me and the wheel, the total angular momentum is conserved. I am spinning clockwise fast enough to balance out the wheel's counterclockwise angular momentum and some more. And this is because there is no net external torque on the system. Another way angular momentum can be conserved is if the applied torque is zero. And you can have zero torque with non-zero force if you remember, torque is force times lever arm. This is what causes things to rotate. A good example that will provide a useful mental picture for later is orbits of planets and asteroids. This is a typical planetary orbit. It's pretty close to a circle, and you can see that angular momentum is conserved. It's going around at a constant speed, but not very interesting. Let me show you comet-like orbit. These highly elliptical orbits simulate orbits of comets, and angular momentum is conserved here. The torque on these comets as they orbit is zero always. The gravitational force from the star, a uh, central force, pulls directly towards the star. So there is no never arm, no force perpendicular to the displacement that tries to make the comet orbit more or less. But when the comet slow down, how can we say angular momentum is constant? Well, angular momentum is rotational inertia times angular velocity. So when the comet gets farther away, its rotational inertia is increasing. So if its angular velocity decreases in just the right way, as this radial distance increases, then the angular momentum of the comet will be conserved. And that's what happens. Johannes Kepler described this observation in the Kepler's second law of planetary motion. A planet's orbital speed decreases as it moves farther away from the sun in its elliptical orbit. Today, with the help of classical mechanics, we can see that this is a result of conservation of angular momentum. 
Why will we won't spend much or any time working on orbital mechanics? I want you to remember the angular momentum that is associated with orbital motion. We are going to call back to this when we cover quantum mechanics in Unit 4 and a strange assumption that a physicist named Niels Bohr made regarding angular momentum. There is much more to say about angular momentum and torque. For one, my treatment so far in this video ignore the vector aspect of torque and angular momentum. With the torque and angular momentum, the direction matters in the full three-dimensional sense. This sense of direction is assigned using the right-hand rule. I will leave it for the videos assigned for your Chapter 2 essay assignment to cover additional implications for this. For now, what I can say is, when I was describing this wheel as spinning clockwise, what I really meant to say is its angular momentum is pointing downward. And in order to get it to spin counterclockwise, I applied an upward torque. But be careful, upward torque is not the same thing as upward push, which is why I'm leaving the full discussion of this aspect to another video. Please give the rest of the chapter a try and let me know if there are any remaining questions. Bye.